In this episode, we'll take a look at how to set up the noise gate on the Rodecaster Pro. Before we get started, there are a few settings we need to take care of. Just so that we are all level set here, let's come into the gear menu, then go to advanced, and then we'll come to audio. First up, we'll go to multi-track. In multi-track, the two most important things here are to bypass audio processing, make sure that's turned off, and then post fader is turned on. Now the bypass audio processing will turn all of our effects off, and we don't want that in this case. And then post fader will allow us to actually record all of those effects into our recording. Very important if you want these to get recorded to your recording so you don't have to do a bunch of post-processing work. Come back out, come over to the processing menu. We'll make sure that the effects edit mode is turned on. That will enable us to use all of these fine-tuned settings. Come back, come into the operations menu and make sure that the broadcast meters are on. I think that'll just be a little bit helpful for us. Come back out, couple menus, and then we'll come into headphones. In headphones, we wanna make sure that the limit maximum volume is turned off. This setting right here can really affect how the overall headphone experience goes. We want it off so that it's not coloring our overall sound because we need to be able to hear what's happening as we make the changes to the settings. Now to help with the demonstration here, I have turned a fan on in my room, which you can hear in the background here, fairly prominently. Now there's something I need to say before we jump into how to set up the noise gate. I would not rely on the noise gate if you do not have to. The reason for that, is noise gates are kind of an old school way of managing noise. They don't sound super transparent. They're pretty obvious, in fact. And so it's not the best option always, but it is an option that's there if you really need it. So that's kind of my philosophy. My philosophy is you should really address the noise in your room in as much as possible. So don't use this as a crutch and avoid addressing the noise in your room. So if there are fans and you can turn them off, do it. If there's an air conditioner or heater that's on, if you can turn it off for the duration of the recording, do it. If there is a lot of reverberation in your room, sound bouncing off the walls, making this echo a kind of effect, hang some blankets in the room. Whatever you need to do to really improve the sound quality. Now that's the ideal solution. Obviously that's not always possible. So Let's talk about the noise gate here. So I've got a couple things going here. I can set the noise gate on the Rodecaster Pro itself, but there's also the companion app. So if I connect my Rodecaster Pro to my computer via USB and I run the Rodecaster app on my computer, I also get this application here that gives me some really helpful tools. So right now I have it set on the compressor, but we can come over here and take a look at the noise gate. And you will notice when I stop talking, this shows the levels here. So up at the top is zero dB, loudest. Down here is uh, minus 60, so it gets quieter down here at the bottom. When I stop talking, look what happens. Okay, looks like the fan noise sits somewhere in the probably minus 55 range, if I had to guess, or didn't have to guess, and <laughs> just kind of eyeball it here. So that's kind of a good piece of information that'll be really helpful for us as we set the noise gate. So let's go ahead and jump into that. All right, so we have a variety of settings, a threshold, attack, hold, release, and range. So let me just kind of walk through what these different settings do. First of all, what does threshold do? This is the level that the audio needs to fall down to before the noise gate kicks in. And you can see right now it's set to minus 52. Remember, we saw that our noise floor sat somewhere around minus 55. So we can use this information to change this. So I'll go ahead and enable it. And I'm gonna bump that up a little bit. So I want the noise gate to kick in a little bit before we get to that noise floor. So I'm gonna say maybe 50 and let's just start there and see how it goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to the compressor so we can see this view and let's see what happens. Hmm, nothing yet. <laughs> that might not be aggressive enough. So for now, also just so we can hear it very clearly, I'm gonna take this range and let's crank it up to maybe 30 for now. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and drop the attack as well, just as a starting point. And I'm gonna go ahead and drop the hold. Ah, now you can hear it kicking in, can't you? Did you hear that? So let's go ahead and switch back here and you'll see what happens. Okay, 
it stopped uh, kind of pulled down at some point. So what happened is when I stopped talking, some of the fan noise still got through. So what that tells me is we probably need to adjust that threshold a little bit more. Let's come up more into the 45, minus 45 range. So it'll kick in a little bit sooner that way. There we go. So now you can hear basically every time I stop talking, it pretty much kicks in. All right. Now you can see how it doesn't sound super natural, but we can do some things here to kind of tweak that so it does sound a little bit more natural. Next up is the attack. And what the attack does is this is how quickly the gate turns off when you start speaking again. And you can hear, it can sound a little bit more natural if you kind of ease into it. And so let's maybe use maybe 3.4 milliseconds, see how that sounds. So I'm gonna stop talking here for just a moment. And then when I start talking, what we want to make sure is that we don't set this to such a long time that it cuts off the first parts of my words. And this is what that sounds like. So if I do this, then it's going to... So you couldn't hear anything I was saying. <laughs> Way too long. Let's try this area right here. Okay, now when I start talking... Is it cutting off the first part of my words? I think it probably is. So I think generally I'm gonna go somewhere in the, maybe the four milliseconds range. Not too far, uh, so it kind of eases in a little bit, but not so aggressively. All right, next up is hold. Let's go ahead and crank that up and see what happens when we do that. We can set it all the way to two seconds, and let's see what happens. Ooh, it's almost like our gate never engages anymore. Okay, that's too extreme. Let's drop it down maybe to 0.3 seconds. Okay, so what that does is basically after we stop talking, it waits for this period of time before it allows the gate to engage. So that's what the hold does. I think at this point, let's leave that at zero, or at 0 0.5, that's the shortest we can do. We'll come back and tweak that if we need to. So next up is the release, what does that do? Well, when I stop talking and the levels fall down to the threshold, the release is how long it takes before the expander or gate, noise gate, will kick in and apply this amount of range. So it applies it in sort of a phased fashion, it's not just all at once. But what it does is it, it takes this amount of time, 0.16 seconds, before it gets up to the full 30 dB of gain reduction to essentially turn off the noise. So let's go ahead and tweak these settings a little bit and see what happens. If I go with a really fast release, you can hear as soon as I stop talking, the expander or gate kicks in. Now if I increase that, let's see what happens. So if I go all the way to the other end, two seconds, let's see what happens there. It kind of fades out. You notice, see, notice how the, uh, the noise sort of fades out as I stop talking? That's what the release does for us. Now, you have to decide uh, for your particular situation what makes sense. The nice thing about having a longer release time is it doesn't sound so obvious and so fast and aggressive. And so, you know, obviously if I go all the way down to 0.05 seconds, again, it, it kind of pulls the sound out immediately sounds weird sounds like i'm on a like i'm a pilot talking on a, you know talking to my co-pilot something like that so if i pop it out here to maybe let's go to half a second and see how that sounds okay we're roughly at about half a second now a little better um, but this is where it's subjective and you get to choose what makes the most sense for your particular situation there is another consideration here now if you're using a noise gate and you're the you're only recording yourself or one person I think it's better to use a longer release because then it, it kind of gently fades the noise out. And it, again, not so obvious. However, if you are recording multiple people on a podcast, I think you can sometimes get a little more aggressive. But again, you just need to kind of test it out and see what works best for your ear. You have to trust your ears. You have to be able to know and have an opinion about what sounds better. <laughs> so I think one thing that's really important is that every once in a while it should be a good idea to turn off the noise gate and see how things sound and then turn it back on and when you turn it back on does it sound better that's really a question you need to ask yourself okay so next up is range range is how much gain reduction it's going to do in other words when i stop talking how much is it going to pull those levels down 
And you can see right now I have it pulling it down 30 dB. Now that's quite a lot. Let's try something much milder, maybe a minus 9 dB. So you can see there, it doesn't totally eliminate the noise, but it makes it definitely a lot less prominent. And this is a little less obvious even than the 30, even with the long release time of one second. So let's kind of look and see what happens visually as I stop talking. You can see that slope is a little bit um, not quite as steep, so it takes it a little bit longer before it fades out. It's still getting most of it, and in fact, we could probably even come up a little bit more if we wanted to, just to kind of test it. Again, subtlety is the name of the game. I think to effectively use a noise gate, I generally prefer to be a little bit more subtle than, a, than really hardcore and aggressive. I think that's probably not quite enough. So let's go back over here. I would say at least six. I would, I would, I think I'm pretty comfortable with nine dB of gain reduction. So again, let's see how that sounds. Yeah, that does a pretty nice job. Now, another thing you can do is check your breaths and see if your breaths are getting captured by the noise gate. So if I take a breath after I, let me go ahead and, and let it kick in, let the noise gate kick in and then take a breath and let's see if it captures that. If I breathe really loud, it captures it, but if I do a normal breath, it doesn't capture it. It actually leaves the noise gate in place. That can help you in post too. It's just less work for you to do to kind of manage those breaths. And they're not quite as, I guess, distracting. So there's a look at the noise gate. Now we'll have to come back and do another episode where we take a look at the noise gate in the context of recording multiple people. Because when you're using a noise gate and you're recording multiple people, it not only serves to help reduce some of the noise, but it also kind of acts like an auto mixer. And so there are some other considerations that you want to keep in mind when you're doing that. So hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Yeah.